contemporary machines are inspired by humans and nature. So within the human body is everything that you need to learn about the machine and then vice versa. Robots are a reflection of ourselves. They're patterned after us, they move like us, and they're beginning to interact with us in increasingly natural ways. As technology progresses, this gap between robots and humans is getting smaller and smaller. They're gonna be part of our teams at work and part of our families at home, and we're gonna rely on them. I see no reason why we shouldn't be able to model consciousness. They can take on tasks that you don't wanna do, that you can't do, that are too dangerous to do. I'm Cara Santa Maria, a science journalist exploring the technologies of today, tomorrow, and beyond. On this episode of Invention Factory, how will robots evolve? If you think about the history of robotics, you had robots in cages doing things very precisely, very quickly, but they're not really aware of their surroundings and not made to be in close proximity with humans. What we've seen happen over the past number of years is robots coming out of cages and put them in, in close proximity with humans to do different types of tasks together. Who's this guy? So this guy is Baxter. Baxter is a collaborative robot. So Baxter is aware of people who are around him. So I'm working next to him. What happens if I get in his way? Get in his way, okay. just, he so. recognizes you there. He is not dangerous. We've had our, our own kids here, you know, seven years old, crawling underneath his arm. If we let him fail this task, he'll have a disappointed look on his face. Funny. So that whole human machine interaction, <laughs> see, he becomes sad. So, <laughs> It's immediate feedback to you that you know there's something wrong. There is no doubt in my mind that in the not-too-distant future, we're going to have more and more robots inserted into our homes. We're able to do new things with robots that we weren't able to do because there's a whole host of technologies that have been put into place around safety. They can react to what's happening around them. They can plan and be proactive about what's happening in the environment, and they're also social in that they can actually dynamically coordinate with their peers, which could be other machines, other robots, or people. What is this robot? This is a concept robot we call the Guardian. It's actually a pair of robots. It's designed to act autonomously, to go off and inspect all the stuff that field engineers would normally have to inspect. And the Guardian is designed to do those dull, dirty, and dangerous jobs that our field engineer normally does. I think another important trend to think about is how robots and humans might merge. Not only will we have robots around us in our house, but they might be part of us. They'll be around us and on us, and we'll welcome it. In many ways, robots and humans are the perfect pairing filling in each other's shortcomings to create a synergy with incredible potentials. To see this new frontier, I went to SRI to check out their latest exoskeleton. What the project was intended to do was to create a suit that would be lightweight, it would be conformal to the body, with the idea of really augmenting your movements. So this is a uh, actuated ankle. So this is the, the lower extremity of our current super suit. So it augments your own muscles. So this muscle here, or actuator, or motor, um, is pretending that it's like an extra calf muscle. So when this fires, it pulls the back of the foot up and you're actually propelled forward. Oh wow, and then you don't get as tired. Exactly. If you're walking a mile with a 100 pound pack, it should be as if you've only been carrying a 50 pound pack. You know, putting a lot of stress on the body for a long period of time is difficult. But if you put a suit on, it augments and supports all of your movements. And that's extremely exciting when you think when people think about injuries and they think about recovery. I don't have any injuries and I'm not 90. <laughs> Do you want to jump higher, run faster? The possibilities are limitless. The most important part of making robots more human is teaching them to think like us. This is what the researchers at the Beckman Institute are working on exploring the new potentials of machine consciousness. Wait, there we go. The robot is trying to detect the ball and navigate the ball from any place on the plate to the end of the goal. He just did that really easily. Does yeah. he always pick the, the shortest path? We're not pre-programmed any of the motions he's going to do but he will actually explore, and if he can like finish it in the shortest time, then he will get a, a, a reward. It's kind of like you're training your dog or your mm -hmm. cat to do something, to do some trick. So you give him some reward, he will remember which kind of motion will result in the best result in the end. 
technology will always be in our, in our lives. I think it's just we have to get more in tune with that, in tune with what that is. All of the behavior that, that we're interested in, that the robot does, is learned behavior. It's not pre-programmed, and it learns the way a child does, by experiencing the world. What is he capable of? Well, that's what we're trying to find out. We're getting him to do more and more complicated things every day. Right now, we're doing very controlled experiments, and we think we know what the outcomes of these experiments will be, but we would like the robot to do something someday that we absolutely don't expect it to do. It's a very exciting prospect. It means that the robot would develop the same kind of consciousness that humans have. Do you think robots will ever approach the essence of being human? Absolutely not. Never. We can't be replaceable, and I certainly don't want that. 25 years ago, when I first began making machines, I was fed by uh, a fear, a fear of what machines and, mm. and computing would do to technology. But the future has to grasp robotics in order to continue to, to move forward as a society. We want to have robots have the flexibility of humans so they can adapt to a lot of different tasks. Have the robot apply human creativity, problem solving, uh, and that sort of thing. There's no reason to expect that they could not reach human-like lives. If we combine robotics with human compassion, we can create a better world, and that's my hope of what robotics can bring. For somebody to formulate what human is, for somebody to study you intensely and decide what your humanity is, if we do reach that, that would be the last question at the end of the universe.